Chapter 5 begins with what we call the fundamental identities. In the first half of this section, we will introduce you to uh, the five sets of basic fundamental identities. Uh, and then the rest of this section, we will begin to use those identities and show you how we can use them to do what we call proofs. The first set of fundamental identities are called the reciprocal identities. And these identities should follow pretty naturally from what we know already just from our SOHCAHTOA definitions and our solvings of right triangles. Um, there are six of them. First one, sine of theta equals one over the cosecant of theta. And then its counter would be the cosecant of theta equals one over sine theta. Makes sense that we're pairing sine and cosecant because we know them to be reciprocals. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. Likewise, we can write four more, two sets, uh, that will pair the other reciprocal functions together. So we could have cosine of theta equals one divided by secant theta, and then its counter would be secant theta equals one divided by cosine theta. And finally, we could write tangent of theta equals one divided by cotangent theta, and its counter would be cotangent of theta equals one divided by tangent theta. There are six reciprocal identities. The next set of fundamental identities are called our quotient identities. We only have two of these. Uh, I'll go ahead and give them to you first and then maybe we'll do a simple proof of one of them just to, so we understand that they are accurate. Uh, we have tangent of theta equal to sine of theta divided by cosine theta. And we also have cotangent of theta equal to cosine theta divided by sine theta. Uh, a couple ways to, to think about this. Uh, let's just kind of talk about this one here. Uh, we know that in our unit circle, we know that the sine of theta is equal to the y coordinate. We know that the cosine of theta is equal to the x coordinate. And we know that the tangent of theta we define to be the y divided by the x coordinate. Well, so if the sine is the y value and the cosine is the x value, then it should follow that tangent could be redescribed as sine divided by cosine. Uh, likewise, we could kind of prove this one just the same. Uh, a second way that we could prove it, uh, if you want to see a second way, uh, would be to go back to our SOHCAHTOA definitions. For example, we know that uh, the sine of theta is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. And we know that the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Uh, if I were to divide these two quantities, divide on this side, that's the same as opposite divided by hypotenuse, that's the fraction on top, multiplied by the reciprocal of the fraction on bottom, which is hypotenuse over adjacent. Um, hypotenuses would cancel and we're left with opposite divided by adjacent, which is our tangent definition. Now, so tangent is sine divided by cosine. And again, we could do the same sort of proof to, to get to that one too. Identity. Our next set of fundamental identities are called the Pythagorean identities. Uh, they're probably the most uh, maybe I'd say well-known or most uh, used identities. Um, let me go ahead and give you the, f well, instead of giving you the first one, why don't I go ahead and just kind of develop a proof of the first one, um, and then we'll go to the, the others a little bit quicker. Uh, 
Uh, if I were to start you off with a right triangle, and we'll pick this angle to be angle theta, if I label the sides of this right triangle, we have the opposite across from the angle, we have the adjacent, and we have the hypotenuse. Um, Pythagorean's theorem would tell us that the opposite side squared plus the adjacent side squared is equal to the hypotenuse side squared. Well, watch what happens if I were to divide both sides of this equation by the hypotenuse squared. Well, so what do we get? This first fraction becomes, it could be rewritten, opposite divided by hypotenuse squared. The next fraction is adjacent divided by hypotenuse squared. And the hypotenuse squared divided by the hypotenuse squared is just one. Well, we know that the opposite divided by the hypotenuse is sine. We know that the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse is the cosine. That leads us right into our first of our three Pythagorean identities. Uh, the first one, and the most commonly used one, is that sine, and whenever we have uh, sine theta quantity squared, it's typically written this way, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. That is the main Pythagorean identity. Now there are two other Pythagorean identities and I'm going to go ahead and give them to you first and then I'll kind of pick one to explain kind of how we can get it. Um, the first of those two is tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta and the other one is 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta. Um, not really required that you uh, memorize these bottom two. I typically only memorize the top one and then I just know how I can real quickly get to one of these bottom two should I need it. Uh, so let me kind of show you that. How could I get from this top one to one of these? Uh, here's how I would do that. I rewrite the original sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Watch what happens if I divide every term in this equation by cosine squared. Sine squared divided by cosine squared, well, uh, we know previously from the last slide that sine divided by cosine is tangent. Therefore, sine squared divided by cosine squared is tangent squared. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is, of course, 1. And we know from our reciprocal identities that 1 divided by cosine is secant. So certainly 1 divided by cosine squared is secant squared. And that gives you a way to prove um, or to find this one. You know, so I really don't bother uh, memorizing this identity here. I just know that if I, I divide this one by cosine squared, I can get this one. And likewise, if I were to take this one and divide it by sine squared, I'd get this bottom one right here. Um, so I know the top one, and I know I can get the other two with kind of one step here. Okay, these three right here are your Pythagorean identities. The next set of fundamental identities are called cofunction identities. Uh, they aren't used that often, uh, and when you do need to use them, it'll be, um, I think, pretty obvious that you need to use them because they are, are pretty unique looking. Um, let me go ahead and kind of develop a, maybe like a, a proof for one so you kind of understand why it works, and I'll just kind of give you all of them after that. If I were to take a right triangle and label one of the angles theta, 
Well, what's true uh, in, in any right triangle is that the two acute angles, okay, take out this one here, the two acute angles always have to add to 90 degrees. Therefore, if I know this one, I can find this one by subtracting the one I know from 90. Therefore, I could call this angle up here 90 or pi over 2 minus theta. Okay, so here's theta. This angle is pi over 2 minus theta. Okay, so it should be true that, um, you know, let's say I wanted to find the, the sine of this angle up here, the sine of pi over 2 minus theta. Well, the sine of pi over 2 minus theta would be this side divided by this one. The sine of pi over 2 minus theta would be its opposite divided by its hypotenuse. Well, that just so happens to also be um, the cosine of theta, right? If I were to take this side here, this side divided by this side, well, that's opposite divided by hypotenuse if I'm my point of reference is over here, but it's also adjacent divided by hypotenuse if my point of reference is right here. Um, so by, by switching point of reference in this triangle, by switching acute angle, you're essentially switching the, the opposite to the adjacent, and so it follows that this is a true statement. Now, likewise, we can kind of show and describe the other five the same way. Uh, we'd also have then that the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is equal to sine theta. So those two kind of go together. Sines and cosines go together in this set of identities. We also have tangent pi over 2 minus theta is equal to cotangent theta. And similarly, the cotangent pi over 2 minus theta is equal to tangent theta. So again, tan and cotans will go together in this set. And then we also have that the secant pi over 2 minus theta is equal to the cosecant of theta. And similarly, we have the cosecant pi over 2 minus theta is equal to the secant of theta. We have six cofunction identities. Again, uh, as I started the slide, um, not that hard to use really, and, and they're not that hard to know when to use them because they're the only identities that we're going to have that have this pi over 2 minus theta uh, expression in them. So they're going to be pretty easy to identify when you're going to need to use them.